Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over urban highways. So this is a topic that's been covered quite a bit on YouTube and other platforms. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Back in the 50s, President Eisenhower passed the Interstate Federal Aid Defense Highway Act, which with the promise to connect 41,000 miles of highway system to 42 state capital cities and link 90% of American populations. In doing so, this incentivized cities to build highways as the Fed discounted them by a whopping 90%. Obviously, cities like Atlanta were all in on this, you know. But unfortunately, as it always seems to be with America, this was a great chance to participate in some good old-fashioned American racism. See, cities in the post-war period were in a tough time. Uh, the advent of the automobile meant that developers were able to build cheap homes on the fringes of cities and sell it to families for the cheap. This caused a mass exodus of families, primarily white, to the suburbs for that good old American dream. So cities like Atlanta were seeing insane levels of population decline, which also meant much less tax income for the city. It was getting much harder to make ends meet. So what's the city to do with a bunch of free road money in cities full of lower income people? You might be able to guess, but they built urban highways. Q Urban Renewal, which brought the intentional redlining of neighborhoods by race and income, by either outright destroying neighborhoods for free freeway construction or dividing them and making their living spaces outright unlivable. And this is what happened in Atlanta. We saw the north side, predominantly white, be split off by Interstate 20 and the south side, predominantly black, and I-20 rammed through lower income neighborhoods such as the West End and Mechanicsville. There's a massive footprint on the city and displays thousands and thousands of people. The organization Segregation by Design displays this quite plainly though, created many graphics and animations showing the red line neighborhoods, which are neighborhoods marked for urban renewal. And it shows how freeway construction went through these neighborhoods and divided the different populations. And you can see on screen, like it's just not, it's just not pretty and it's very obvious. And it really speaks to a lot of like how Atlanta is today. During the times of freeway construction, there were heavy protests from property owners, environmental activists, and other groups against the construction of freeways. And in some cases, these groups were successful. One example is Sweet Auburn, the, the black business district and neighborhood that the downtown connector eventually ran through. Originally, they routed it through one of the largest and most successful black businesses, Atlanta Life Insurance Company. They were successfully able to redirect the highway route several blocks east of the company. However, it still caused incredible destruction through the black community's main street, Auburn Avenue. And today you can still see the effects. It lingers to this day. As you can probably see on screen, it's it, like these are beautiful buildings walking around here and very dead, especially near the connector where the freeway runs through. When I was out filming this, like I just felt so... I lived downtown for several years in this area and like I never done a full walk like down Auburn Avenue like this and it's just sad really like there, there's some things happening like there's the Atlanta Breakfast Club which is very busy and some other places but overall it was mostly parking lots and vacant buildings and just really sad to see. Another example of protests that happened was over Freedom Parkway. So originally there was supposed to be another freeway I-45. The city went through the land acquisition and de demolition and destroyed the entire neighborhood of Copen Hill. As you can see today from this footage, today we have a big park space and a greenway with bike trails and stuff. So what happened here? How did this happen? I'm not going to get super in depth in this video on the full story, but it was mostly politics and timing. See, this was all happening in the 60s and 70s when environmental activism was becoming the forefront of American politics, it seemed. And unlike many red line neighborhoods in the city, this area was much more affluent and much more white. And many of these neighborhoods did not like this. And this is where we saw some of the first neighborhood organizations form in Atlanta. My favorite one is called Citizens Against Unnecessary Thoroughfares in Older Neighborhoods, which is a, a pretty good name, I would say. Pretty rolls off the tongue. But in the end, we ended up with a greenway spearheaded by President Carter, which ended up being this freeway-esque roadway with limited exits and stuff running through this, this park space, which featured a lot of trails and bike trails. And then at the end where they, where it hits Moreland Avenue, they built Freedom Park, which it's interesting because you can walk around this area and still see staircases. Um, they're often known as staircases to nowhere. Now is Freedom Park the best use of the space here? Maybe not, but it's definitely better than a freeway. So let's talk about what it's like in the areas of the freeways. It's just not an enjoyable place to be. It's loud, it's smelly, it's dangerous. Obviously, incentivizing vehicle traffic in your neighborhood isn't really desirable. 
It's not good for pedestrian safety. It's not good for land use. It tends to create more parking lots and, you know, make everything more spaced out than they need to be. Like no one wants a freeway in their neighborhood. No one wants a freeway where they live, right? It's just not a, a friendly place for humans. So what makes it really sad is that like, even if you weren't displaced by highway construction, when all of these highways are being built, you were systematically screwed regardless. Cause I mean, your, your property values would drop, your quality of life would drop. And unfortunately, to this day, the city continues to prioritize out of town commuters over those who still reside in the city. You know, urban renewal, which the city at the time thought would improve their tax base, it, it's what they thought people wanted, actually ended up just decimated their tax revenue because the city became so sprawn out, especially by this point, that most of the metro area's population live outside the city limits um, and commute in to work which people who commute into the city just do not pay their fair share for the infrastructure they use. This is what the organization Strong Towns tends to coin the growth Ponzi scheme, which is a topic for another video. Obviously, interstate highways are important for a developed country. I, they have tons of benefits from transportation to the economy. By no means am I against the private vehicles of technology. Like, obviously, it's just extremely important for the overall functioning of, of a society. But where the United States falls short, was devastating city centers by ramming these highways through the middle of their cities, destroying communities, incentivizing bad land use, encouraging sprawl. In doing so, we devastated the fabrics of our great American cities across the United States in favor of the suburban car commuter and the pockets of the gas companies. So that was the short story of what happened with urban freeways. But what's in store for the future? A lot of cities these days are talking about highway removals which is exciting. And you know, car infrastructure is just not sustainable in any form. So it's it's good to encourage highway removal projects. We shouldn't be encouraging freeway capacity projects or interchange capacity projects or you know anything Georgia DOT is doing, <laughs> really. The traffic in Atlanta is famously horrible. Like travel times from the suburb commutes that should be 30 minutes will easily be in one to two hours on a normal day. So what are we doing about it? There, there's a few projects being talked about the main one is called the Stitch, which is in the preliminary planning stages and is a cap project envisioned for around Civic Center Station, our train station that sits over the freeway. And it talks about capping a lot of this section. Most of it is below grade and wouldn't be too horrible to do. And building private real estate, housing, park space. And that project has actually received federal funding from Raphael Warnock, 200 million for the preliminary planning stages. That'll probably happen one day. That's cool. There's also a few others. There's one in Midtown proposed by Georgia Tech, creating a, a park space over where the connector runs through the grid. And then lastly, there's a project for Buckhead. It's a similar idea where Georgia 400 runs through. So personally, I call for urban highway removal. They are just not good uses to have in the middle of your city. You know, the Reconnecting Communities Fund created by the federal government is supposed to repair a lot of the damages that are caused by the freeway construction, um, which is the funding that the Stitch is using for its preliminary research. Personally, I think that funding should probably be used for I-20. I-20 just divided so many different neighborhoods across the west side and east side. Overall, all I can really recommend is to continue pushing for better public transit and reducing car usage in your own life. That's really all I can encourage at this point. This is a bit of a bummer video, and I'm sorry about that. There really isn't too much positive of a spin I can put. Anyways, I just wanted to thank you all for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and give me a like and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I really appreciate all the attention I got on the last one, especially over on TikTok. Give me a follow there, same username. Yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you all have a good one. Peace out.